What's up everyone, it's lens 8 here, and today I'm going to be comparing the highest spec iMac with 10th gen Intel, an i9 Mac versus Apple Silicon with M1 chip and 16 gigabytes of memory. So this will be a good comparison to see what the fastest Intel machine can do versus the fastest Apple Silicon machine. So let's get started. We'll start off with some everyday tasks like iMovie and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna run the Geekbench benchmark and we'll also run it on the Mac. And let's see what we get. So here we have a fully specced iMac, the fastest single core Intel machine possible. And we have a fully specced M1 Mac. So the fastest Apple Silicon right now that you can get. So here's the MacBook Pro Geekbench result. And here is the iMac benchmark result. So here are the system specs. So as you can see, uh, we've got a fully specced RAM on both these machines. And so basically the limiting factor here should be um, the computer's processes and nothing else. So we can see that in multi-core, the iMac is slightly faster than the MacBook Pro. But for single core, the MacBook Pro is much faster. Um, but it's not a huge difference in day-to-day -day usage, I find. The difference is that one of these is going to not change your power bill very much. And that's uh, this one here. This one gets out so much heat. The next benchmark we're going to do is the graphics performance and the compute. So let's start that now. We will choose built-in GPU. And let's see what we get here. I suspect that this Mac is going to be much faster just because it's got a dedicated graphics card versus integrated on here. So as we can see here, the MacBook Pro got a 21,000 and the iMac got a 60,000. So yeah, I guess one of these has a dedicated, so for graphic stuff, you still dedicated GPU is still going to win. So for this next test, we're going to export a movie, uh, which is the MacBook Pro unboxing, which you can watch here. And that's going to be in 4K high and better quality compression. Actually, let's change that to faster. And we're also going to do the same on the MacBook Pro. So let's get both of them synced up and I'll start them at the same time. Do that now. All right, so they both started exporting at the same time. And we'll open up the little progress window. And let's see which one does it first. So the iMac just finished and the MacBook Pro is still going, but it's pretty close. Only a few seconds difference. And the iMac, you can hear the fan running. So there you go. Slightly faster on the iMac. So I'm going to try this again, but this time do ProRes better quality instead of high and see if there's any difference. So we're going to start that now. All the footage from this is in 4K. Uh, so, it's the exact same project across both devices. Um, so, let's see this time. Whoa, looks like the M1 Max jumped ahead a little bit. Well, I'll come back and we'll see which one's faster. Next up, I'm going to do a task that I commonly do all the time, which is auto-enhancing or editing photos. And in this case, I've got 330 of the exact same photo in RAW, and I'm going to auto-enhance them all, and then I'm going to uh, export them. So let's start them both at the same time. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, it did. That was a bit of delay. All right. Let's see which one finishes first. 
For this next test, I'm going to be editing 330 photos that are all the same, that are raw, all at once. And I would normally edit these manually, but because uh, I can't do that in an automated way, I'm going to be just using the auto enhance. I'm going to press Command E on both. And now I'm going to press Enter on both to start it off. So let's do that. And now both devices should be enhancing the photos. And we can see which one's faster, Apple Silicon or Intel. The Intel Mac just finished and the Apple Silicon Mac is still going now. So it looks like the Intel Mac took about two minutes and this is still going here. And the Apple Silicon just finished then. So now let's export all the images. So we'll go File, Export, and we'll choose the same settings here. So let's go Display P3, High Quality, Full Size, and we'll do the same on the Mac here. So we'll go File, Export, and yep, we'll change this to High. So we have them both ready, and we're going to start them at the same time, so let's just do that now. So now they're both exporting, we can check the progress. Uh, let's see which one's faster. So, it looks like the Intel Mac is going to win, which is surprising, because I totally thought Apple Photos would be optimised for Apple Silicon more than Intel. But it doesn't look to be the case here. So, it looks like we're neck and neck here. Both of them around the same percentage. Uh, so I think you can pretty much call them even. But this is a really good sign because this is a laptop with the fan, you know, not going crazy. And this is a desktop processor, a desktop chip. And the heat is pouring out the back, the fan's starting to ramp up. And it's plugged into the wall. And this is now punching ahead. So there you go, Apple Silicon truly is really impressive. Yep, it won. Bam. Hope you all really enjoyed this video. Um, unfortunately, I've actually had to return this iMac and I just haven't had time to do any of the other benchmarks I wanted to do uh, because I work full time and I also do TAFE night classes. So I'm going to have to end this video here. But uh, I can tell you that the Apple Silicon Mac is probably my favorite because, you know, it costs two grand and that iMac fully spec was about eight grand. Um, so, you know, I think it makes sense to go off the cheaper machine, you know, buy an external monitor, off you go. You can take it around with you versus this iMac just plugs in and it's never going to, you know, long term Apple's probably not going to support it as long. But yeah, good comparison. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, double click the dislike button if you disliked it and uh, click the like button once if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more lens addict out see you all for the next video